Hey guys, welcome back. I'm glad you joined me today. Uh, today I want to talk about something that's not really exciting, but it's necessary. And not nobody else is really talking about this kind of stuff. It doesn't get the attention it deserves or, or really needs to. Uh, but if you want to make your business and your, yourself resilient, you need to, 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 to give things like this a, a thought now and then and, and revisit them from time to time. And I'm talking about risk. I'm not talking about the kind of risk, you know, you get preached from your safety director, you know, don't follow too close and watch your mirrors and this and that. Now I'm talking about risk to your life and your business in general. And maybe present some things here that you wouldn't, you don't always think about when making decisions. And it just adds resilience and strength to, to your life and your business in general. Help you survive through the hard times. Tell you what, I've been going through some hard times, and, and I'm going to share some personal experiences with you here to, to really, mm, you know, it can really help it hit home for you. Because this, this could be you, you know, very easily. So stick around, and, and maybe I can help point out some things here you haven't really thought of. So first of all, uh, it's not what this video is really about. It's about you know insurance, but we're just going to touch on that quick. Now, every year when you're up for renewal, you know if you're leased onto a carrier, they're going to you know make sure you have everything you need coverage-wise as far as liability and physical damage and stuff. But especially if you're independent, you know every year at your renewal, just you know have a conversation with your agent about you know your your limits on everything you know any changes did you add or remove any equipment did you sell anything you know is there any new laws and you know you may have added something that's not really in your you know maybe you bought an APU this year well APUs aren't generally covered on your physical damage for your tractor so if you're worried about that you know talk to them about that you can add a small rider on there for you know physical damage on that you know type type of things like that or if you if you did a major you know refurbish on your truck and suddenly the values increased well they need to know stuff like that otherwise you're not going to be covered but really more what I'm talking about is uh, well l let me share my personal story with you so since the beginning of the year the January of 2020 I have had a ton of bricks rain down on my head you know financially and business wise uh, first part of the year I had a major breakdown and then after that I I had a a I don't know what do you want to call it a an eye disease disorder condition whatever that sidelined me for several several weeks and keeps reoccurring so I've been unable to work mostly from the first of January until what are we at the middle of March here just about in a you know, it's, it's on again, off again. I haven't worked very much. Unable to. And let me tell you how serious this is and how serious this can be. Just just from my personal experience, okay? And, and then you'll understand what I'm talking about. So first of the year right away, you know, by the 15th of January, you have your fourth quarter estimates due, you know, for federal and state withholding tax. Uh by the 15th of January, several thousand dollars. You know, my my quarterlies are fairly large due to my profit margin. So add that onto the, you know, what the heck was it, a $5,500 repair right away at the first of the year. And then right after that, you have your, you know, your end of year, you got to start working on your tax return for the previous year and usually owe a little bit of money there. So then there's that. And then, of course, you know, coming up here shortly is uh, first quarter estimates due again. Uh, you know, still even before I'll be back to work. Uh, this happens to be the time of year when I get my license plate renewal in the mail. So that's $2,000. Um, my insurance is up for renewal this time of year. And we all know what's happening to insurance rates. They're just skyrocketing. So <clears throat> that's no fun. Uh, so in a little bit here, I'm going to tell you how I got through all this. 
Now, you start adding all this up, and you can smoke through a big amount of money in a big hurry. So, you know, putting some forethought into this, you can get through it. Maybe, maybe not. Hopefully you can. But we'll get to that in a minute of how to, how to mitigate, you know, all this. So when you talk about risk, the first thing to think about that, that pops into my mind is debt. And, you know, everybody wants to go out and get a new truck, whatever, take on a $3,000 a month payment. And you sit down and do the math, okay, my revenue is this, and I can afford to, you know, the truck will cost me this per mile, otherwise it will cost me this much per mile in maintenance to buy a used one. We're all, we're all familiar with the warranty versus no warranty argument and, and all that, and I'm not, I'm not here to tell you that, but what I want you to consider is the risk part of it. So if, if something happens to you like what happened to me and, and suddenly you couldn't work, what would you suddenly do about that $2,500 or $3,000 a month truck payment? You got enough money set aside to, to pay it. What are you going to lose if you can't pay it? Because you could end up losing more than just your truck. You know, this could affect your whole family. You could lose your house. You could lose your car. You know, a, a lot of different things here. Not be able to, to pay yourself, you know, on top of everything. So <clears throat> consider that. You know, I'm nothing against a, a new truck if you can afford it and you've measured it out you know honestly in your head and very carefully but consider you know add these things into the equation of what what would happen be, trust me I didn't see this coming I woke up one morning like this and it's been with me ever since hopefully we're turning the corner on it things will be better but you never know how long things like this are going to last. You could step out of your truck one day and fall and break your leg in half. And how do you plan for that? You know? So, appropriate levels of debt. I'm not a debt Nazi. You know? Used to be. Uh, you know, Dave Ramsey and all that. And I, I still think that's a great idea, a great way to go about things. But I also recognize that Sometimes it takes a little bit of debt to get things done. An appropriate amount of debt. Okay? And all, that's different per individual. You really have to measure that out for yourself. Uh, but definitely do that. You know, sit down, put pen to paper on every single thing. And there's also, you know, in addition to all the money I had to pay out, there's regular, you know, uh, bills and, and stuff that's due that goes along with that. So it's not all just the, the big ticket items. The little things will get you too. You know, of, of course, no debt is better than any debt. If you have to take on a, you know, a small amount of debt for whatever reason, uh, you know, hammer that out. Get it over with. You know, everybody's so concerned about, oh, you know, I don't want to do this because I lose my tax rate so I don't want to do that. First and foremost in business, I'm not saying you should ignore taxes because you absolutely should not. But when you're making a decision for your business, the first thing you should base that on is, is this the right decision for my business? Not what it's going to do your taxes, not anything. Else. First and foremost, is it the right move for my business? Then after that, we factor into things you know, like taxes. You know, is it an appropriate amount of debt? Your risk? How does it, you know, affect everything else in your life and your business financially? But first and foremost, make a good business decision. And then we'll figure everything else out after that. You know, there's there's always things we can do. Tax-wise and, and so forth. So enough about that. Um, so how did I get through all this? Well... A big emergency fund was is his uh, first and foremost bigger than you think because you can smoke through fifty grand, you know, sixty grand like nothing. You know, you hit it the right time of year when everything's due. You know, sometimes you can spread things out, but some things are just due the certain time of the year, no matter what. But you hit things on the right time, man, and uh, you you can go through that money like water, and you still need to have money left to pay yourself 
you can scale down what you pay yourself but you know separate from your business you have your household obligations and you need to cover that also probably have people depending on you maybe you're married kids whatever uh, so bigger than you think if you think you need a ten thousand dollar emergency fund shoot for 20 man if you think you need 20 try for 30 you can never have too big of an emergency fund anybody that chastises you for having all this cash on the sidelines or a pile of money somewhere and not doing anything with it and oh you're losing money to inflation or oh you're you could have that money invested somewhere for seven or eight percent screw that this this not, this money is not to make money this money is to manage risk keep your ass out of a bind and handle situations like this that's what it's for so if you have a pile of money sitting there ten twenty thirty thousand dollars whatever you can go out and make decisions like buying a new truck you know, as long as you're not tapping into that uh, you, you know also you could run into some uh, a position you know too where somebody doesn't pay you you know if I had a position right now where I was doing business with somebody that stiffed me on a bunch of money oh that would be devastating so always remember that too you will burn through it faster than you think uh, you know because all these little things come up now the second way I've managed to make it through this is by having paid for equipment uh, wasn't always paid for obviously I, I financed it uh, not a hundred percent it put substantial money down uh, the terms I got when I first bought it weren't that great but one thing about buying a truck is it's easier to refinance than it is to finance in the first place so if you buy a truck and you get a lousy interest rate or poor terms if you can afford it you need it you want it whatever a lot of times you can bite off that chunk and then a year later refinance it I think when I bought mine it was a ten and a half percent interest rate which is ridiculous uh, but I knew that you know after a year I could take it to my local credit union because I'd have significant equity in it and when I went there to refinance it I cut my payment in half and he brought it down to four and a quarter percent interest so that really helped then you get that payment down and you can just start pounding it out man you know make extra payments on it whatever and uh you know get that thing knocked out and out of the way real quick and I think when I bought my trailer yeah I didn't I didn't buy the trailer that way I bought that you know financed it through the credit union right off the bat at four and a half percent so it was pretty reasonable then you just get busy and make some sacrifices and pound that stuff out now one thing that absolutely drives me nuts and I'm gonna I'm gonna back these statements up so hard that that nobody can refute it in some upcoming videos is it's a pet peeve of mine of people that let their accountant run their business okay it's your accountants job to you know help you manage your taxes file your tax return help you keep you from paying extra in taxes okay it is not your accountants job to assure you are profitable make good business decisions they will tell you in every circumstance when you ask them a question what to do in order to keep from paying taxes they will not tell you what to do to make your business profitable to make the proper business decision if you kinda get what I'm getting at so, so what I'm getting at is it drives me nuts and it's I hate to to use the term ignorant because people don't understand the meaning of it and they take it personal but it is an ignorant statement when people say oh you gotta have tax write-offs oh you gotta you gotta get a truck every three years for the tax write-offs no you don't no you don't yeah, I'm, and I'm gonna do some videos on this to prove it out and understanding this can change your whole business your whole financial position okay I'm not saying you should pay more in taxes you should you should take every tax deduction available to you but there are better ways to save taxes than staying in debt staying in bondage having payments that you don't need to have and the sole reason you took on these payments in this debt is for tax write-offs 
That is absolutely insane. Okay, you can you can get the the same amount of tax write offs and, and and manage your taxes to get all those benefits without being in debt. Uh, don't use it as an excuse to go buy a new truck. You want a new truck? Go buy a new truck. But don't lie to yourself because lying to yourself makes you misunderstand. You know the the whole situation. Uh, anyway, we'll get into that more in, in some future videos. It's a huge pet peeve of mine, and I can't wait to tackle that issue. So I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, bottom line is having paid off equipment has really helped me through all this. Okay, uh, Obviously, I had to make some big payments, pay some things out. But if I don't roll, you know, the, the truck expenses are, you know, insurance, um, some minor monthly recurring fees, uh, you know, like uh, like for instance an ELD fee, you know, 20, 30, 40 bucks here and there. But if I don't roll, there's no fuel. You know, if I don't roll, there's no maintenance. So paid for equipment can save your ass. And if people make fun of you because you, you run a you know, truck that's a few years old or getting miles, oh, you need to get a new truck, you need a nicer truck. To hell with that. If you got a, a truck that's reliable, good mechanical condition, and you're relatively comfortable, you can make some small sacrifices. And I tell you what, if you're if you're watching my videos, you're learning how to fix a few things on your on your own, and and there's a lot more to come on that. You know, I'm only getting started. I'm only a few months into this, and I'm not going to go fixing things that ain't broke. But as things fix, or as things break, you know, we'll 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 tackle some things. You know save yourself a lot of money keep that older truck going keep it in great shape that's how you make money in this business honestly and uh, in a lot of circumstances the older trucks are more reliable so we'll get into a lot more I don't mean to go on a rant but anyway paid for equipment a big key in all this and and just lastly I've never really been in favor of this generally financially most of my life because you know, uh, when you're young, a lot of this stuff is a gimmick. Uh, but should the time ever arise when you need it, you'll be glad you did. And as long as you spend an appropriate, reasonable amount of money on it. And I'm talking about supplemental insurances. Now, work comp, to buy it on yourself, you know, that's a state thing. Not all states say you can buy it on yourself. Uh it's a waste of money really because it's expensive and it happens to be in the state where I live you can buy it on yourself but you cannot collect so why the hell would you buy it on yourself in the first place so work comp is out you know true disability would be great but for your average you know one truck guy or very small business it's unaffordable you can be well over you know thousand bucks a month you know it's not affordable um, so, you know, you can turn to things like an Aflac or a company called Combined Insurance. I like them both. I, I have an Aflac policy that I kept from a job years ago, and I think it's like $30 a month, and I have the accident one. So if I'm in an accident, you know, it'll help pay some doctor bills and all that and some deductibles, which isn't a lot, but when you're in a, when you're in a pickle, You'll appreciate that money coming in, man. And they pay out, you know. They don't. They don't fight too hard. Um, combined Insurance has a, a a wider variety of products, if you ask me. They're just they're they're a similar uh, concept, just different companies. So check into that. You know, you can get quotes. They have, uh, you know, accident insurance. They have, you know, if you get an illness or injury. They have uh, cancer insurance, which I'm not, you know, to me that still seems like a gimmick because if you have cancer, your health insurance covers cancer. But I know there's a lot of, still a lot of things that are going to come along with that. So I've never priced it out. You can price it out and see if it's appropriate or not. Um, you know, you can get supplemental life insurance. You can get blah, 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 blah. There's multiple scenarios. You check in all that. I'm not saying go spend a bunch of money on it. But, you know, 
maybe if you don't have that big emergency fund and you need to kind of even things out a little bit as you build it and buy some additional insurance you know you get a big emergency fund you could always back off some of that insurance none of this stuff has to be all or nothing absolutely not you know and if you're <clears throat> you know a lot of carriers if you're leased onto a carrier they'll make you buy an occupational accident which is eh, kind of serves a purpose of a work comp it's not the same but it's not bad it would you know probably help you out a lot so you can look into all that on the same lines man life insurance you know if you're single that's one thing nobody depends on you if you're married have kids whatever somebody that depends on you get some life insurance you know 20 year level term insurance is cheap you know you could buy a quarter million dollars if you're in reasonable health for probably you know 20 25 dollars a month you know that's really cheap you know health insurance uh, life insurance is not what it used to be you don't need to go out and buy a big fancy whole life policy or universal life most of that stuff is just a waste of money anyway trust me I know I used to do that I used to be in that world and uh, I could not with good conscience sell somebody a policy like that but term insurance is very cheap and you don't have to keep it for if you want it drop it drop it you know later on but if you got somebody that depends on you have it and also health insurance I mean uh, yeah health insurance I mean I, I know the whole problem with health insurance right now you know uh, got got to be political but you got to have some kind of health insurance man I know it's expensive to have but you wait till you need it you'll find out how expensive it is not to have so work hard at trying to find yourself something you know if you're a, um, even uh, if you're a Christian you can get into these uh, you know cost sharing plans they qualify you know they're pretty reasonable um, it's not true insurance but it's uh, it's better than nothing man I think Liberty Health is a popular one you can search them online anyway um, I ain't trying to preach. I just don't want to see any any of this happen to anybody. Anybody, it's really unfortunate when somebody has to go down due to an illness or injury. Um, I'm not saying that it's not going to happen anyways, because man, that's life. It could it could happen to me? You know, if things don't turn around or whatever, you know, it, it could happen to me. Um, but some planning can really go a, a long ways. So. You know, keep all this in the back of your mind and always consider it when you're making decisions you know find financial for your business um, and uh, just take some time and think about everything make good decisions so I'll leave it at that I don't want to sit here and run on and on about it uh, so I hope you all have a good day and I wish you uh, all the success in your business see you later